When I made the map originally, I didn't spend too much time detailing it because I knew that I would end up modifying it heaps within game. Especially the terrain directly surrounding the city. It's going to flow really, really closely with what's built. And to be honest, I didn't know exactly what I was going to do at that point. So in today's episode, we're going to start with a really beautiful waterfall here on a big hill that I'm going to make. Much like the airport, this hill is going to frame the edge of the city. Eventually, I'll have a couple of different levels coming off of this hillside as well. But I thought, why not have a really beautiful waterfall up here to frame the edge of the city? It'll be in the background of a lot of shots and I'm pretty keen on building the city with some really beautiful terrain surrounding it as opposed to in the middle of a desert. So once that basic hill is shaped, I just put a little crater in the top with the terrain tool, put a water source set to the lowest size inside that little crater and then just let it gently come down the side of the hill. We don't get too much control over the terrain in City Skylines unfortunately so I want to zoom in and detail this up and make it look a bit more realistic with some props. So of course I've got my prop waterfall from Kamenogi but I'm also using some cliff props from Greyflame. These two combined help create the waterfall itself. I'll also use some of Greyflame's mossy rocks to narrow the size of the river so it's just a little wee stream. Up the top here I've used a water surface prop matched to my watercolour to square off the edge of the water to the waterfall. Then I've used those mossy rocks from grey flame again to create a more realistic edge to the lake or the pond. And then I want to put like heaps of ferns and lily pads and things directly around the edge of that pond. And then put some grass and trees and stuff surrounding it outside of that. And just like that we've got a beautiful waterfall. I started this city by sketching the very first section that we built in the first episode and I'm at the point now where I've been sketching this next section that we need to get ready before we do anything else in the city. This time the vision has included a bit of a waterfall in the lake here. This is for a couple of reasons, I think we can do some really cool things surrounding this but it also splits our lake into two levels. The lower level is going to be set to the sea level or the sea height. This will mean that as we get closer to the sea, I'll have the option to put harbours and things like that in. I set the waterfall up down here the same way I've just done it with the last waterfall, and I've also used some similar materials to create retaining walls and whatnot that we've seen in the rest of the city. Next, I'm going to lay out some roads, and I've mentioned before that I believe that most of them would be in tunnels if this city was to be built in real life, and there would only be a minimal amount of them because there wouldn't be much emphasis on them. But for the sake of the mechanics of the game, where the road is on ground level is where I'm going to require services. Maybe in real life these areas would still be tunnels but would have car parks in them and maybe like ample pedestrian entryways to the surface. We're going to do some really heavy detailing later on in this episode so in order for me to be able to do that I need to get all of the public transport in particular set up now. There's two forms of public transport we're going to focus on in this episode but the first one here is going to be the podcast system. I think I've used this in place of maybe a tram because it's a little bit more discreet. I especially like the little wee narrow track I can put this in locations that don't get in the way of any pedestrians or any roading networks and can actually even set them up as like little sightseeing things or tours. And I guess that's kind of what I'm doing here. I've got the track running right around the edge of our lake which would be a beautiful spot to go and tour around. But I'm also setting up some new stations here. This first one here is going to be in quite a handy spot which is pretty well right bang in the middle of our city. 
The stations can be a little bit of a pain to set up if you're doing these in your own city. You've got to make sure you put them on very flat terrain before you move them anywhere. Then I'm going to set up another station a bit further down by our waterfall we just created. Of course, with the heavy emphasis on the public transport, this has got to be efficient in-game or the citizens just aren't going to use it. Especially considering the size of the city, it's walkable within 5 minutes from any point to any point at the moment, so if they're going to use public transport, it better be bloody well set up. So I was messing around with the maglev and wow, this thing is mince your organs fast. I was pretty desperate to use this in game but unfortunately it's only as a monorail and I need it to connect to an outside connection which has to be a train or a train line. Maybe I'm wrong but as far as I know a monorail line cannot connect to an outside connection and that's what I'm trying to do here is set up a connection in for rail. We've got our airport that we did in the last episode and now it's time to bring people in by rail. I had a pretty good look around on the workshop and I couldn't really find anything like a maglev in train form. It was all as a monorail which is a bit unfortunate. I couldn't even really find any high speed rail. So in the end I'm using Nardo's floating train but I'm using his train station track so that it doesn't look like it's floating. And along with advanced vehicle options I can make this into a high speed rail. I've set it to about 450 kilometers an hour. Nardo's train that comes with the pack looks pretty futuristic and this is going to double as our high speed rail in and out of the city. I am still considering using the maglev within the city but we'll see how we go with that. Directly under those train tracks we're going to set up a small industrial area or actually quite a big one considering there may only be this one and another one in the city but the reason I'm putting this here is because the highway is just to the right of the camera shot underneath that structure so there's easy access in and out of the city to this point here. As City Skylines players we know that industrial areas create huge volumes of traffic especially trucks. So before I detail any of this area I'm going to put this last building in and it's this nice curved double tower that fits pretty perfect really. I was umming and ahhing for a little bit but nah it looks great so I'm going to leave it in here and we can finally move on to detailing all of this up. As nice as Nardo Station is, we've got to change the look of it here to fit Centaurus a bit better. I would prefer if it was a nice white simple structure with maybe a green garden on the roof. I'd also like it very simple around the entry and exit. This is not only going to help with the contemporary look but it's also going to make it as easy as possible for the citizens to use the public transport. Some other things I add to this area are a couple of office spaces directly under the railway track and I've tried to personalise the decals a bit in front of those running into that big curved building. I also thought the river was a little bit wide here so I've added a lowered down section with a curvy little walkway on it and I've also added this really beautiful mural in the background. I really love this. I want to add some areas to Centaurus that are really fun and unique. I think to personalise the city properly we've got to have these sorts of areas. And I want Centaurus to really surprise people and that's why I've decided to build a little artificial surfing wave right here on the edge of this river. I'm going to tuck it in between some nice gardens in the end so it doesn't look too out of place but these are the sorts of things I really want to add to Centaurus to add a personal touch. and. It's pretty cool. Unless you live right by the beach, there's normally quite a commute to go and find a wave. So why not bring a really cool wave so it's pumping every day into the city. 
the first thing I need to do is create a little bit of a gate system so you get your ticket come through the gates to the booth and then up the stairs and she's all go there might be quite the line here on a sunny day so we're gonna need a tree here for a bit of shade for the patrons who are waiting once I've got all the practical things in like stairs for access and whatnot I could start putting down some fun props things like tubes and various props that people might take down the wave there's even a windsurfer here if you're really mad dog in it and then I'll slowly go back to doing those practical things and we're going to have some sort of jet system here that pushes the water down this ramp and then into the wave I'm using a white clay base from Sully to make the main structure and while I mention Sully he was a big inspiration for this wave we spoke about how we could possibly do this before I tried this and he gave me some pretty valuable tips on what to do and what not to do or rather what I could pull off and what I couldn't so after all of that I had an idea to use Kamenogi's waterfall and try and make something with that seen as it was animated and it can be turned to procedural objects without it losing its animation this gives me a lot of power to make my own wave Next I did a little bit of research about what these look like in real life and it was pretty simple there was a wave and then there was some sort of catchment system behind that and then a place where the riders could return back to the starting position and the main reason I wanted to build it right here on the edge of the lake is because I'm using the water body from the lake to actually run the wave the entire structure is about 30 centimeters under the surface of the water I found this crystal on the steam workshop that I thought would be perfect for the wave it's the right shape and it's even got a pattern on it where it looks like sort of seawater I take a bit of a gamble on these sorts of things all the time and download about three or four things I think could work but this worked pretty perfectly once I'd used those to shape the wave up I can use Kamenogi's waterfall to make it look like the water's rushing up the face of the wave and then I'm going to flip that same waterfall around and make it look like it's barreling over on itself after that you'll see me finish the area off with some paths and a few more essential things that we'd need to see this run in real life and then Kawabunga surfs up dudes oh my god I'm so old Now we can start detailing it all up. The first thing I want to do is add these little lift shafts where the elevation and the path changes. Then I'm going to add some decals and some foliage in to the ground level here because I want to put a level above this and it's much easier to detail it before I install that second level. That second level is going to contain a small apartment block and a really popular restaurant. We're also going to continue that path on around the edge of it and onto another part of the city and of course we're going to add some beautiful trees to this level as well the restaurant is going to contain a fair bit more detail but it's going to be most things you'd expect we're going to have some beautiful tables out the front we're going to have some shade there's a nice deco on the ground and of course some beautiful planters around the place where we can put some really nice colorful gardens in I also put some raisable entertainment cubes in this area so it's real entertainment within game as well.
Do you remember this pod station? This was the one that we put in right at the start of the episode. We can finally come back and finish it off. This one is a little bit awkward. I've had to raise the pedestrian path up here to get over the pod track. So with that in mind, I've decided to make a bit of a raised park here around those paths. This means that I can create a pod station here with a glass lid on it which is really cool and quite practical. It means that we're still getting all the sunlight that we would normally get, but if it's rainy or windy or whatever, it's a bit more sheltered in here for waiting. It also means that we can see the pod station working, the pod cars pulling in, the people getting on and off, which I think is really cool. I sincerely hope you guys have been enjoying this series. We are almost halfway through it already. If you haven't heard me mention, I was hoping to have this entire series wrapped up in less than 10 episodes, so maybe there's 5 or 6 episodes left. Hit that thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's episode guys. If you don't subscribe to me, please consider it. I'd really appreciate it. It helps keep me motivated to make the best content I can. I sincerely value having a quality community so thank you to each and every one of you guys. There's going to be a little bit of a break in the series now as I return to France. I am pumped for that so I hope to see you guys there as well. Take it easy, look after each other guys and look after yourselves and I'll see you later. See ya.